Okay. Well, I think Kathy said to get started. I apologize. I didn't. Uh, I didn't hear her. Uh, my name is Joe George. I work for Texas Instruments in uh, in Waltham. I'm actually, a local uh, field applications guy. And um, we're going to spend some time here about basically uh, um, BeagleBone, white, black, etc. Um, how to connect it to uh, the internet since this is Internet of Things. And um, and, and in all honesty, we're going to start out with. Um, I guess there's a. Come this way or that way. Um, um, we're going to talk about really how um, what, what TI is going to help you do is do really boring like ping type demos. Um, but there's no demos because what we want as a silicon vendor, we want to be able to do is get these tools into your hands so that you're able to do the cool applications. Um, if anyone noticed just a few days ago, I think WhatsApp got bought by $19 billion you know, by Facebook. So um, obviously that's more of a software app, but something like that would run on a TI chip would be, would be very happy to uh, um, to get 450 million users of, of one of our parts. So um, selfishly, that's sort of where, where we're coming from on this. Um, I'm actually a, uh, uh, started out actually as a, as, as a Harvard guy. I'm, I'm, as a, I'm an alum actually too. So in 1990, um, and so, <laughs> um, I do come back once in a while when I can to, uh, to help out on, on, on stuff like this. So it's always fun uh, coming back to MIT. And so um, I actually started out um, course 16, believe it or not, uh, avionics back then. Because now it's called IT, I think, or, or something like that. Back then it was called avionics. Um, but my master's actually is course six. So I consider myself a hardware guy. Um, did a lot of DSP stuff. And of course now I spend a lot of time booting Linux, which is sort of funny. So as all Harvard people find out, you end up doing 90% of what you do. And a lot of time ends up being software anyway. Um, except for the fact that now I'm getting into RF. And I skipped 013, 014, and all those crazy classes. And now it's all coming back when it comes to all this uh, wireless and Wi-Fi stuff. So uh, hopefully this will, be, uh, this will be interesting for you. Oops, and I'm going to get used to the, uh, look over there. There we go. Um, so looking at the agenda, we'll start out, like I said, with, uh, with sort of BeagleBone Black. Um, and, and I sort of consider that sort of the GUI version of it. Um, it's got HDMI. It's pretty fast. It's got DDR3. Um, we'll jump that, and I'll show you a quick demo of a couple uh, 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 demos on the uh, on the BeagleBone Black. We'll go through some, some software options that we have. Um, BeagleBone, uh, both uh, from the TI, starter where Linux. There's also Android. I actually won't spend a lot of time on that, probably more on, on the Linux side. Um, then we'll get to the BeagleBone White, which in all honesty, I've used more than the Black, and I'll explain to you why um, for the, some of the work that I've done. I've done a lot more. You know, instead of a GUI-based system, a lot more you know Linux command line, believe it or not. Um, it's the type of stuff I've done. And what's powerful, too, about the BeagleBone White is it's got onboard um, a console, basically, with the FTDI chip that allows you to, to do a console. And even JTAG, if you want to use Code Composer, which is the PI IDE for doing stop on debug, you'd be amazed um, what Code Composer can do for debugging Linux. It looks like a big project, basically. And you can search, especially if you have a Linux-based uh, host. Um, we'll then jump into um, ways of doing uh, both Ethernet and Wi-Fi you know, connectivity. This is Internet of Things. Um, and BeagleBone White actually has a cape that runs the TI Wi-Link uh, parts. And so you can, we'll, we'll show you uh, a very boring ping demo, but uh, you get to, get to see that work at, that at least. Um, I am a hardware guy, so I had to talk a little bit about the hardware interface for those who might be interested. And, and again, a lot of these slides I'm going to try to blow through pretty fast in the session so we can get to the demos. And anyone who wants to talk in more detail about Linux or hardware, et cetera, we can talk about um, afterwards. Um, don't forget Bluetooth. Our Wi-Link actually has Bluetooth on board. So you might have a lot of Wi-Fi going on, but then you might have a phone or something that you want to connect to you know, the Wi-Fi gateway. And Bluetooth becomes something convenient to do. Um, and actually, that sort of comes for free, actually, on a lot of the, the Wi-Link things, stuff that's out there. Uh, Simple Link is something I don't know if people are familiar with. They've heard of CC3000. Um, all the stuff we talked about up here is basically doing connectivity with some type of um, MPU type system, right? When you get into uh, the simple <coughs> stuff as opposed to the Wiling stuff, that's now a, an MCU based, right? So you might have MSP430 connecting, connecting the simple link. This stuff is probably more, um, you know, 1 to 5, maybe 10 megabit type Wi Fi, while the stuff up here is more, you know, 100, 150 megabit. So it really depends on your application. Um, and you can probably guess that the stuff down here is going to be a little more lower power than the stuff up there from a megabit standpoint. 
Um, we got a little demo sub, uh, summary block diagram. This is one slide I find. There's mounds and mounds of parts once you get a TI. And there's one that I thought was a really nice summary of which wireless technology is right for you. We'll, we'll look at that at the end. And back, uh, back up, I can get into all kinds of details if people want to talk about the actual. Uh, I'm showing you here, since we're in Internet of Things, uh, since we've been spending time on Beagle Bones and Beagle Bone Blacks, the lower end uh, evaluation modules and such are out there. We've got higher end stuff we can talk about. We can talk about JPEG, or Composer. If you want to know more detail in the part itself, I'm in Silicon Valley to talk about that. Um, except, does that sound good? I, I guess I should do a time check. Uh, I'm supposed to be done in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I have 45, so I'm going to aim to get before 15. Does that sound okay to everybody? I guess if anyone around 4 o'clock starts to shut the lights off, then um, we can do the demos in the dark. So that's, that's always doable. So the BeagleBone Black, um, we've, we've talked about it over and over again. I'll just give you a, a quick summary on what's, what's, what's interesting about it. Um, well, I think the first thing that people like about it, and I'm looking for it now here, is the, um, oh, I just lost it, uh, is the, uh, here you go, uh, the HDMI connector. So um, I'll boot it in a second, and I just realized it's actually been booted, but I just realized since I've done nothing here. I've actually booted a BeagleBone Black here, and... <laughs> Gotta figure out which direction the mouse is going in. It'll take a second to come up. But um, it's got a DVI output, which is nice. Oops, I looked around. Well, oops. Sorry. Um, it's got basically uh, uh, an HDMI connector here so you can have a display, and it's got uh, USB so you can connect the keyboard and the mouse to it. And so in a GUI standpoint, what I was saying, you could actually use the BeagleBone Black as, as basically like a media if you wanted to. Um, the other stuff that's on here is similar to the white. It's got expansion headers. It's actually a bit faster than the than, than what the white can go. And also the fact that it has DDR3 memory on it ends up being a little bit faster than the DDR2. Now, um, on board, it actually has EMMC. That's where the file system and if you're running Linux, et cetera, is stored. Um, but it also has um, a micro SD slot. So I will boot, um, well, we'll talk about the software in a minute, but you can boot differently based on what's on the <coughs> EMMC or if you want to use a, an optional micro SD. Um, one thing that it is lacking is if you want a UR console, and I do have a UR console, you can't see it. Well, actually, it's right there. There's a serial debug. You need to buy a, a cable from DigiKey. It's like 20 bucks or something to actually hook up to it and touch your console. So that's something to think about. Uh, again, are you more sort of the, the GUI way of wanting to do stuff or um, you know, the console way of, of, of wanting to do stuff? The, um, I guess I, uh, since we've got this, I figured I should just do a quick um, uh, introduction of, of what the actual, you know, the, the, the part looks like. In the case of the black, there's the one here, it's Cortex A8. Um, we've got, you know, LCD controllers. We've got a plethora of uh, um, peripherals. I won't go through in detail the usual, you know, things that you expect on a process, right? Square C, SPI, UARTs, etc. A couple of things that are interesting is we do have an Ethernet map for connectivity. And matter of fact, depending on the package you get, you can actually have uh, uh, basically a switch. I mean, I, I joke about you can run it as basically two Ethernet ports or run it in IP phone mode, right, where basically it ends up being a, a big forwarder. Um, that obviously becomes interesting from a, from a connectivity standpoint. Later on, you'll see um, that SDIO is what's used to connect to a lot of the Y-Link. Uh, but I guess one of the nicest things about all these ports, it's got USB. And once you have USB, if you can plug USB and find the right, you know, often Linux driver for it, um, it's amazing what uh, you can get up and running on on a hardware standpoint. So software-wise, um, I don't know there's a whole list of software options out there. I've honestly spent the most time in Linux, and that's what I'll talk about here. I can definitely point you to you know, places about other software and such, uh, or even hardware. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you and tell you what I know and I don't know, and at least point you to stuff you know, if I don't know um, as a point of reference. Uh, Android's out there, though Android obviously isn't the most useful if you don't have a uh, 
uh, a screen <laughs> or a or a pad. Um, and one of our some of our, our higher end EVMs do have an LCD. And I think there's even a starter kit out there that you can take a look at. Um, so if you want Android on there. And um, uh, Starterware is something actually that comes from our microcontroller world. Uh, you had about a company called Stellaris uh, years ago, and it's called Stellaris where it started with that same code base, which you know is as simple stuff as Blinky, right? Blinking an, uh, an LED, but it also has uh, full USB stacks. Um, in the case of both, you know, uh, uh, master and, and, and client, and also uh, even an LWIP, etc. So the Starterware becomes. Uh, really basic, you know, sort of almost board support library level code if you don't want an OS. Um, and if you do want an OS, there's plenty of uh, options out there, companies that do one, um, you know, sort of micro OS as opposed to, you know, Linux, Android, it's like, you know, sort of super OS. Um, and there's even a TI OS, which comes years ago from uh, something called DSP BIOS that came from Spectrum Microsystems at the TI acquisition. So those all exist as, uh, as software options. So again, we'll said we'll, uh, we'll concentrate on Linux here. Now, when it comes to Linux, um, especially for anyone who has run BeagleBone, the term that you might have seen, and you'll see on the boot screen in a second when I bring it up, is Angstrom. Um, and sort of Angstrom project is where the, the stuff that runs natively on BeagleBone is coming from. I don't hear, have it here. I believe it's Linux 3.8. I'll have another slide that, that shows in more details all, all the different Linux there. Um, I mean, I'm a hardware guy that's been doing software, right? And trying to get, and if you go into how to build stuff with uh, um, with the BeagleBone Black and Angstrom, you start having to do, uh, you know, uh, you know, use Git um, and going through the TI um, uh, firewall when it comes to anything, Git proxies and all type of stuff is the biggest pain, whatever. So um, nothing wrong with Angstrom, nothing wrong with doing it this way. But I'll show you uh, uh, another uh, uh, way of doing the code uh, in a minute, the, the, the TI SDK and how we do it. Um, but again, there's some some great things that that the, Be that the BeagleBone community does with Angstrom. Matter of fact, some of the original work that I did, we saw it work first on Angstrom. Huh? Things like a USB um, Ethernet. Said, wow, it works on Angstrom. We got to be able to get it to work on on on, you know, on the other way of doing it. So, which I'll jump to in a minute. So, um, Angstrom definitely has some uh, some some great advantages and stuff. But Git was one that I definitely uh, <laughs> had a tough time. Uh, though now I am doing wiring drivers with uh, with Git. Um, so one thing I wanted to show you from a demo standpoint, um, and this is sort of the point here, is try to go through demos as much as possible. Here's your BeagleBone Black. Um, one thing, uh, it'll boot Angstrom, and I'll show you that uh, in a second. One thing about the BeagleBone Black is you do have to have 5 volt power, um, which is something that's a little different from why you don't need to have external power. It's, it's an option. We're booting off of EMC, in, EMMC in this case, and uh, it's going to boot up, and I don't know how well it's going to come out uh, on the little screen there, but basically you'll get sort of a... Uh, a GUI that you can uh, uh, boot code on, and I'll, I'll explain in a minute why why the uh, uh, the router's there. So let's go ahead and I don't know how well that's going to show up, um, but I'm going to I already booted it. But I'm going to go ahead and is it better? Oh, that's true. This thing I should just look over that way myself. Uh, so let me. It's true. It doesn't look good over there. Right. Yeah, let's give me an error. I think I hit a key here at some point. <coughs> Login, of course, is just root. Yeah, we'll go ahead and reboot it. And what you'll see happen here when it boots, um, and in this case, we're booting now off of the MMC. And what you see here is a boots. Is up here. And this is where I'm a little unfamiliar with the BeagleBone Black Ops, so I've never uh, uh, used this much here. Um, signal comes up. And <laughs> I apologize for how small the screen is, but uh, you'll be able to come and play with it um, later on if you need to. Um, let's take a minute as it, as it comes up. Um, but basically, you're getting a, a BeagleBone, you know, an Ubuntu looking GUI here. Um, it takes a minute to boot up. And um, I guess, in some ways, it's sort of.
Anyway, that'll boot up, and then you can basically get what you normally get with any type of uh, you know Ubuntu GNOME desktop, where you can bring up the calculator, bring up whatever, and and and, and run it that way. So move this back. Now, what's interesting is, as I mentioned, uh, Angstrom is what BeagleBone Black and even BeagleBone White um, nat natively, uh, natively boots, um, and, and, and the software kernel that's, uh, that's provided. What TI did, though, is said for people that aren't as, as savvy as they would get and things like that, we have something called, uh, basically, it came originally from the Arago project. And what happened in the Arago, in the Arago project is basically TI provided a Linux SDK based on the Arago kernel. Again, a lot of it is the same Linux and, and Linux distribution. And originally, there was even an Arago tool chain. We moved lately to something called Linaro, Linaro tool chain. Um, again, this is all GCC. But what's key about here is you basically just go to a TI website and you download the Linux SDK. It's about a gig and a half, but okay, memories. Uh, Memories are very easy to, to get nowadays. You download it, and it's got all kinds of board support packages. It's got training tools. It's got Code Computer <coughs> Studio, which we'll talk about later in a minute. Um, for those who don't want to do Android, it's actually got its own uh, matrix um, launcher that's showing up on the screen. If I can get through, get this, uh, if you have a screen, if you don't have a screen, let's say a Beagle Bowen White or a Black, it'll actually serve this serve this up on an HTTP HTTP browser. So you can then actually control everything uh, again over the internet. Since this is the internet of things, um, and it's very easy. And Citar, by the way, is just the TI uh, um, sort of the name. There was there's Stellaris, which is the MCU side of the house, and Citar was more the MPU side of the house, and that's where that, that terminology comes from. So all I'm going to do for this particular demo is boot the same uh, Linaro. I'm sorry, boot the same. Uh, uh, BeagleBone Blackboard. I do need to unpower it, though. And I'm going to do nothing but click in the SD card, which I built with the, uh, um, with the, uh, the Linux SDK. Plug that in. Ooh, I do need to... Ah, I missed it. Oh, no, I got it. I'm going to go ahead and boot. Apologies, so my mouse is failing me. My mouse is dying. I have to use the screen here. There. So now it's putting Arago. Or Arago, is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> I apologize if I've got the uh, wrong pronunciation. I got to plug in Ethernet, which is why I didn't see the IP address. <coughs> I just made the web server there. So it's now actually making the, the matrix GUI application virtually. If there was a display, it would actually put it on the system that has a display. And as soon as I get an IP address, So this one's real easy. Type in root. Something no I have thought because I plugged it in too late. Oh. 
And it does take a minute to... Uh... So there we go. So there's Matrix now uh, over Ethernet. I'll bring up that other demo and show it to you better in a second. Over Ethernet, and now you can actually go into um, certain apps on here. Uh, i got to tell you, a lot of them, since there's not a display, if I go into multimedia and play a video, it'll say you have no video display, <laughs> so you can't play that. So I can go to one of the more boring ones, like say, uh, I don't know, if you go into settings, um, I think there's network settings. I'll tell you what the IP address is. So you can see that now this becomes a, a useful GUI from that standpoint. Um, so what that was doing... <coughs> Let me go back here. So that was doing now is instead of uh, booting uh, Angstrom, booted Arago, and in this case I was cheating a little bit. I was going over Ethernet on Twitter <coughs> instead of over Wi-Fi, but you could also do the same thing over Wi-Fi. Like uh, the Ethernet connection was, was showing the matrix, uh, uh, the matrix um, uh, GUI. If you want to go and use that. <coughs> And quick summary on the load roadmap for Arago. Um, as we mentioned, um, the, uh, the, the, the previous Arago, and actually the one that I'm used to, is, is, is actually <coughs> Linux 3.2 based, um, uh, SDK 0507. Now we've got SDK uh, 06, and one, the one it is still Linux 3.2 based. The one disadvantage of this is VeagleBone flat is supported on Arago, but it doesn't have the HDMI support. For that, you had to go to the Angstrom. Um, but again, you you have the ability uh, to you know boot the Arago if you need to do. And uh, one thing that's coming out, uh, this is one, you know, one Q always means March 31st, and really that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the latest that I've seen on this. At that point, we yeah. will have um, full BeetleBone box support. So the HDMI will work at that point. And uh, more importantly, there's other things like device tree. This is now going to the 3.12 mainline kernel if you choose to use that. Uh, but again, I think Angstrom is going to 3.12 even sooner than, uh, again, I'm not real, real as familiar uh, as I am with the, with the Arago stuff. So, thanks for already gone. Again, these are the, the choices that, that you can make from the Linux standpoint. Um, I thought this was just a nice generic slide, and we'll go a little bit more detail when we get into the wide link about it, but it talks about, um, and I guess there's a the term that we've used at TI at times, it's called silicon entitlement. It says, how can you get, you know, use every piece of, of you know, the silicon as much as possible? Because remember, down here, there is a Cortex-A8, right, that's running. Um, there are, you know, in some cases, I don't know if people knew it, but there are, there's a neon accelerator that has floating point, 32-bit, that comes from ARM that you can run. There's a couple projects right now that are using, uh, uh, doing MP3, you know, EQ and things like that using the neon processor. So there's a bunch of other peripherals that we haven't spent a lot of time talking about, but just realize that there is a silicon down here, and it's always uh, interesting trying to figure out ways to get your uh, your software to be able to go, um, your drivers and et cetera, being able to access the silicon that you can use from, from your application uh, software up top. And again, this is the, the stuff that we want to give you the boring demo and the drivers and et cetera that, you know, you know down here, it's so that you can you know, do the cool applications up here and, and, uh, and, and make a lot of money from that standpoint. So no one uh, uh, questioned me too much before when I said, well, I used Ethernet um, to do this connection here. You know, why, why didn't I use Wi-Fi, right? Why can't we, why can't we do it wireless? Well, there are ways of doing it wirelessly. Um, there's actually, and actually not on the bigger one black, but on an EVM, uh, we did actually uh, go and uh, find a D-Link and found the correct drivers for it, and I had to write down what it was because I couldn't remember it completely. It's the RT3070 STA. Um, got KO driver we had to build for it, and we were able to build it and get a generic D-Link to connect to the USB of, of, an, of an EVM, something similar to the Beagle one, and got it to work. So with some driver work, you could get Wi-Fi working on a BeagleBone Black. Um, but it turns out that there are other BeagleBones out there, and uh, it's just like the black is the new one, the white's the one that I've worked with for almost going, going on two years now. Um, nice that they do show you prices and stuff like that here. And someone was asking me before about that. Um, but um, the next demo I'd like to show you real quick, and actually I already booted it, just so I, must, I don't know how many times I'm going to say, you guys want to sit here and watch me boot stuff, but is, uh, is a demo of the BeagleBone White. Now, a couple things that's interesting about the BeagleBone White um, booting, and uh, just kind of here. Okay. 
is, um, is first of all, that uh, you can run the Beagle on white purely off of USB bus power. The 5 volt is optional. Um, so that's nice for debugging in a plane, which I have at times where I didn't need the 5 volt power supply. And um, the only thing is you won't go at the maximum frequency. I think it goes at like 400 megahertz, and you know you can't get up to the full 500 or 600 unless you have external power, but which you can still run a lot of demos and stuff. Um, the other thing that was nice is you mentioned that there was a, an onboard uh, a USB JTAG chip, and so what that does is give you a console um, without needing an extra cable, and allows you to run the TI Code Composer. And that's something I'm going to show you real quick. And I just keep losing my mouse, so it's going to be interesting doing it this way. It doesn't have HDMI. Uh, it doesn't have HDMI. Now we'll get into capes in a minute, um, and there are potential out there to get to do this with a cape. Well, I just realized I can do it this way. <laughs> we'll get over here. So what I'm going to do now, and remember that, oh, you know, I didn't show you the, uh, I'd already booted the kernel, so I just wanted to show you that. So I had uh, booted Beagle Lone White earlier. And I'll tell you later what some of this other stuff means. So I just wanted to show you that uh, I can go to, you know, main directory, and just to see the stuff that's there. But now what I want to do is I want to actually connect the BeagleBone White to Code Composer. Takes a second, minimizes. Sorry, I'm going to watch time here. And you see the CPUs that are there. I'm going to go and connect to the Cortex-A8. And by the way, there are, this is an XDS100 class. There's XDS510, XDS560. There are higher end um, XDSs out there. They are a bit faster, but I've got to tell you, this one's not too bad. So now, as you would expect, if I try to hit enter here, nothing's going to happen. Anyone tell me why? JTAG, right? I heard it. I've stopped the processor right there. There's a program counter at that particular location. Um, I'll show you a slide in a minute where um, I'm running Code Composer in Windows right now. So I could take the VM Linux file, I could load it here, and I could see in the disassembly with the exact function it's sitting in right now. Um, when you do it in Linux, it's beautiful. You get source level debug where you're actually going through the Linux. And I'll, I'll show you a screenshot of that. I just want to also have a Linux box here. Oh, yeah, you can change it. You can muck up as much as you want. Um, you can actually go in here. I'm not going to search for it now with this whole backwards thing. You can turn off the MMU, and you can watch the entire Linux uh, window just, you know, crap out completely. Um, but yeah, we don't we don't stop you from doing anything. I mean, you have you have full power um, on this type of stuff, especially when you're when you're in code composer. So I'm going to go ahead and run. And I don't know if you you noticed that, but all of a sudden like, the, the the control the enter that I did right. So I'll go back there. So um, so going back to the slide set. This is a picture of. I did on my Linux, um, and actually in this case we were doing some suspend and resume um, testing, and you know, and, and debugging that. And I've heard a lot of bats. I've never used them, and I have nothing to, to say against them or anything. <coughs> they're a great tool and stuff, but there's certain things that the lotter bat was dying on that with the stop mode here, we were actually debugging inside. Um, I don't know if you can see it here. This is actually sleep code, sleep.s. This is actually sleep assembly code inside Linux. Um, doing Linux assembly, and you can see where the function calls and such came here inside sleep.s. I'm not seeing the WFI, but there's a WFI here someplace. Um, <coughs> that's basically where, where we're entered and enable the debug and, 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 uh, and figure out the system. And this is where uh, I didn't do this very much justice, but this is the entire this project explorer is the entire Linux tree. So this is inside, uh, you know, mock arm 
uh, OMAP2, blah, 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 you know, wherever the uh, um, basis of spent code is um, inside of the Linux project. So very powerful from that standpoint. All for, I think it was 89 bucks, right, from the, uh, because Code Composer is basically a free license for XDS100. So um, you can debug Linux that way. Uh, I'm here again. There we go. Um, someone had asked earlier, I think, about is there HDMI? So one thing, and I think it's a nice pro structure that uh, that Kathy brought is all the uh, uh, capes that are available for Beagle Bone White. Beagle Bone White came out first, so you're going to see a lot more capes that are out there. I think she's got an entire list. This is one I still love of the PowerPoint someplace. Um, but there's also capes starting to come out for Beagle Bone Blacks also. Um, in general, there's there are some incompatibilities between the, the connectors, so you got to got to take a look at that. But um, becomes nice. And oh, I almost forgot that I had mentioned. Um, here, let me jump to the next slide. We'll, we'll mention that. Uh, so now we mentioned how do we bring Wi-Fi to uh, BeagleBone White? Well, one very easy way of bringing Wi-Fi to BeagleBone White is, and I have one sitting here, is the uh, Cape, um, basically a Wi-Link gate. Uh, it's WLA 1835. We're not going over the part numbers. That basically means two. 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is what that is. You can also get, there's 1837s out there that also give you 5 gigahertz in my mode, et cetera, um, if, if you want them. But uh, that's what's out there. And for that, the nice thing is, um, I'll give you a quick demo where I'm going to basically um, now go to my Google and Wi-Fi that I already booted, and I'm going to use the, uh, the cape board there to basically ping something or somebody. Um, I was going to ping some, somebody, which I'll explain later. But I uh, found out that there's some MIT server there that, that it's open and it connected to that. So uh, <laughs> I'm not going to bother trying not to connect to it. So that's where we were here. So I connected earlier and I said it's not worth showing you guys me booting again. Um, but yeah, so this is the server I'm connected to. Uh, MIT guest, even though I'm not connected to the API I wanted to connect to here, but that's okay. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and ping them. And there you go. So that's basically this. I guess I could bring this down. And yes, you can do IPER for, you know, whatever you wanted to, to do the actual testing. Um, but yeah, so basically right now, the Eagle Bone White here through the Wi-Fi is going through some and like you guess the uh, uh, guess what kind of works in place. Obviously, you can put in a WPA password or something like that, <laughs> and not uh, not connect with the wrong one. Oops. Yep, it. Minimize that guy. Continuing on. Um, one nice thing too that oops, go back to this uh, roadmap of play. One nice thing too is in a we had two groups at TI that actually talked to each other, the Linux group and our uh, our wi wi -Fi, the Wi-Link group. So this now shows that if you went and got a WL1835 module, use a TI SDK, you can then get the drivers. Um, and right now what's supported in SDK 6 is basically, well, all the Wi-Fi that was back here, so ABGN, um, it's got two by two MIMO, a bunch of ways of, uh, of um, uh, uh, you know, enabling all that. And again, this is basically, you know, Wi-Fi working out of the box. And what happened as of SDK 6 is we added a bunch of uh, Bluetooth stuff in. Um, so don't you expect you get that quote unquote for free with the Wi Link 8. So I've only run into DP, and if we have time later, I can show you my iPhone connecting to um, <coughs> Beagle Bone Black. Of course, I have an audio tape on there, so you would hear no music, but it would at least tell you that music is playing. If I have my EBM, I can, I can give you real audio, but I, I didn't bring that. Uh, but realize it's not only Bluetooth, you know, HTTP, SPP, HID, the stuff that you're used to, but there's also Bluetooth LE also um, in the wild link case. It becomes a very, very popular <coughs> standpoint, putting it up and running. And this is a roadmap now showing basically what they're going to do is they're going to sync up, I think that should be SDK 7, they're going to sync up the same Linux thing at 12, you know, on March 31st, um, that, uh, that, 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 you know, Linux group is. Um, and then, so quick uh, overview from a Linux standpoint. This is now showing how we've got us looking down here with our particular drivers, and basically we're using uh, Plutopia stack. 
a company from Stone Street One that's doing the Bluetooth side of it. The Wi-Fi stack, is basically, I ran it earlier that I didn't show you, it's got the case, Apple can, et cetera, um, firmware, et cetera, it's all running out of the box um, on top of Linux to be able to do, to do the Wi-Fi. And uh, to my hardware uh, friends had to say, here's basically M33X running. Uh, but there is actually Android drivers. There are other drivers for this, so uh, for the Wi-Fi game, whichever one you pick. Um, and in this case, basically what's happening is the Wi-Fi is all going over STIO, and Bluetooth, believe it or not, is going over a one megabit uh, unit that happens to be the protocol that, that they picked, um, and that's how that's running. Um, and a couple other things to show. So there are so the, the, the capes is all we've talked about here. Um, but you also see uh, this is the EVM. I didn't bring one with me. I've got some slides that you can talk about in more detail, or, or the SK. You'll notice that uh, we have something called a COM8 connector. Um, and so what you'll do is silicon, uh, uh, we sell a silicon basically to module providers, LS Research, there's a couple of uh, Murata, there's a couple of TI uh, on, and that's what that's what you see here. This is actually the chip inside of the camera. There's a, there's a there's a bigger picture right there, and basically the TI defined this COM8 connector that you could then plug into an EVM. So uh, a lot of silicon vendors, uh, I mean a lot of uh, people don't want to do the RF part of this, and so it becomes nice to be able to get a module and plop that down on the board. So the, this is what you would plop on your on your product if you, you know, had a product that you would do. But the COM8 connector is a nice common way for, for different uh, module vendors to be able to uh, to provide this. Um, the other thing, too, is that I mentioned is don't forget Bluetooth. Wildlink gates all have Bluetooth. Um, and then if you wanted to do Bluetooth on its own, we do have parts that uh, do Bluetooth. And so the higher end ones might connect to a 32 bit MCU, like say the AM55X or even MPU. Um, some of the lower end ones do talk, you know, talk MSP430. You can't do a 2 tp with MSP430, but you could do SPP or something like that. So we scale the wireless along with, with scaling the, uh, the processor. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that uh, Stone Street One is the part where you'll see this is some MSP430 stuff, but also for Beaglebones and, and stuff, it's all uh, 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 Stone Street One that, that provides commands and stuff. Um, so this is a nice summary of, of, of the TI wireless and where we're at. Uh, Wiley Gate is what we've been talking about, uh, the WL1835. Um, this is a, and this is a COM8 board is what usually connects here. You might have seen COM6 boards. If you bought an AM55X EVM, it came with COM6, which is basically a, a lower end uh, wireless part. Doesn't have MIMO, a few other things that, that's not in there, uh, et cetera. Um, this is the, the Wi-Link side. And now the simple link side is uh, CC3000, which I'll talk about in a second here. Um, and that's more MCU level. Of, uh, of Wi-Fi, we mentioned you know this stuff is you know 100, 150 megabit per second type bandwidths. This is more going to be you know one to five to ten megabit type uh, type bandwidths. Um, and this is the booster pack that I have um, with me. If you wanted to see it, I haven't actually connected it. It's actually got MSP430 here, and it's got the CC3000 here. And think about the entire stack is running here, and the interface here. Uh, between the, the the MCU, I think I got a picture of it. So I'm sure I talk about it, um, right? Some type of low cost MCU, and this is a pretty simple ACI interface, which is basically you are with some protocol right, on, on top of it. Um, and then one thing that you might look at, and I've I've got one here that uh, you can take a look um, that I wasn't able to connect to, but wanted to connect to, was uh, the fact that wouldn't it make sense to put this all in one piece of silicon? And that's something that you might see happening down the road. Um, and actually, I'll show you like, the demo of one that I, that I have here. Um, and that was this, this demo here. Uh, I, I think for the lack of time, I'm not going to go through it all. I'll, I'll just jump through it. You already saw the ping. Um, it's probably the interesting part. So this is what I thought was a nice uh, sort of summary slide here. Um, it's talking about the right technology. Um, when you look at uh, the different options, and I think even when Thomas was speaking, he said, yeah, sort of makes you know, every one of these uh, wireless technologies. Um, what becomes interesting is, you know, does it make sense to have range, right? For range, you know, something like Wi-Fi, obviously it's going to be your highest range. Um, and so to put 4 gigahertz into the Bluetooth and Bluetooth daily aren't, aren't that much. Um, or another thing is, is throughput the most important? Well, of course, Wi-Fi is going to give you the you know, highest potential throughput compared to some of the other uh, you know, potential that's out there. But again, the, uh, you know, the trade-off of throughput of port is now going to be you know, power consumption, right? Wi-Fi is going to take more uh, you know, milliamps than, than something like a, the BLE or et cetera. 
And then this is interesting too, and, and our, our, our partners in Aaron can talk about the different topologies and what makes more sense here. Um, your particular situation. Honestly, I'm lost on some of this stuff. I just know Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so, and how that, and that stuff works. So I thought that was a nice little little summary slide there to talk about, um, you know, you're going for range, you're going for throughput, you're going for lowest power, which is some level of proprietary versus standards versus, uh, um, you know, flexibility that you're looking for from a, from a network. And I think I am well over time. What was that for me? Are we moving or are we staying? Uh, no. Well, are you doing some additional demos out in the hall? I can. I can wheel my car. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do the drawing. <laughs> oh, was there any questions? I didn't forgot to. Yeah. What's involved when you want to get down to twirling disk? You know, like. You want to get back down to what? To twirling disk. You know, low model hardware. I got to find or something. Well, I mean, you can do it. So there, there is, uh, for the Wi-Link and stuff, there is, have you seen the Smart RF Studio? There is that type of product that you can do um, for the Wi-Link. I mean, they end up being, you know, inside Linux. Uh, but you can basically, you know, tweak that way. You're talking about the wireless side. <laughs> Oh, put it on the beagle phone. Well, I'm going to let me put it on the 